Hello everybody, this is Abraham with North Shore Computer Services. What I got here is, uh, this is my Dell that I use for my own uses, for business and for uh, all, all the transactions that I conduct in business. And uh, it is a few years old. Uh, it's time to upgrade this computer. Um, what I do like about this computer is that it can lay flat. Um, the fact that it can flap the other way, I really don't care. I don't use that feature, but I like the fact that it lays flat. Um, <clears throat> what I don't like it, about it anymore is that the battery doesn't, long, doesn't hold charge as long as it should. It does not have a USB-C port, so I have to use an adapter, which is not a big deal. In general, computer works just fine. Uh, it also uses a regular um, Dell adapter as opposed to a USB-C adapter. Obviously, it doesn't have a USB-C. So it's just a, a few years old from an older generation and uh, time to upgrade this. This computer, let me take it apart and show you what I do like about it. And uh, things that I do like are on the inside more than on the outside. Uh, I do have a replacement computer, which I will be showing you in a moment. And I want to talk about positives and negatives of the replacement. I have not opened it. I have not taken it apart. I don't know what's waiting for me. A uh, big problem on these Dell computers is uh, coating. It has this um, slip-free coating and it's after time it starts to be sticky and it starts to peel and it is it becomes awful. The whole computer becomes awful. Uh, another problem is the um, feet, these rubber feet they just fall off and uh, the glue that holds it down uh, becomes ugly. In any case, what I do like is that it's really easy to open. Just pull the screws, there are no tricks to get it open. Um, fairly easy to replace the battery. You have your memory and you have your hard drive, which is a regular SATA hard drive which is not the M2, so um, this is an i7 processor. It is fast. This computer, it has no issues in as far as uh, speed goes. Like I said, the major problem is the battery. It does hold charge, but if I don't use the computer for a while and I don't have it plugged in, it drains the battery. And that usually means that the battery is uh, um, weak. I did replace the battery. I couldn't find the original Dell battery. Uh, I replaced it with a replacement. It does work, but like I said, it will give me maybe two hours um, on the charge. But bigger problem is if I don't use this computer for a few days, it will drain the battery to zero. Um, so overall, this is a good package and my biggest uh, appreciations are you can upgrade the memory, you can upgrade the hard drive, really easy to take apart, haven't really had any issues with hinges, haven't had any issues with this computer at all, aside, like I said, from the battery. Um, let's put it back together and take a look at the new computer that I got and it's new for me it has been around for um, a little while it's I don't like buying something that just came out come on I just said they were easy to assemble okay um, I like things that have been around for a little bit. Same happened uh, with uh, Galaxy Note 7. 
uh, Galaxy Note 7 came out, I was looking to upgrade. Uh, Samsung was making a big effort in advertising Galaxy Note 7. I waited. Uh, two things come to those who wait. Number one, uh, the prices come down. Number two, the bugs come out. So if there is a bug similar to Note 7 where the phones just started uh, going up in flames, you don't want that. There is the same problem with some of the Apple computers. So in any case, um, the computer went on sale, got a good discount on it. Same thing was with this computer. I did get it with a decent discount. So um, this machine was, will be a backup for a while and then we'll see what to do with it. I do like that this is Windows 10 and uh, I'm not a big fan of Windows 11. Too many customizations for me to, to do to make it work the way I want to. But I guess it's the future. So this is my new baby Asus Zenbook. Oh, this one is Dell. What is it? Um, it's an Inspiron 15, no, Inspiron 13 7352. So this is Inspiron 13, a smaller one, lighter one, although it's not that light. Okay, Asus Zenbook, and it's a Q409Z. Get our knife, get the seal cut, and now it's mine. It's like getting a virgin. All right. Dum -da -da -dum. OLED. I like how they make it. This is all Apple's um, uh, Apple this design packaging. They were the first to make packaging nice. So, okay, anyway, now I've talked about Apple. Power cord. And the reason that I like the USB-C power cord is that when I travel, I don't have to grab 10 different cords, uh, computer power cord will charge my phone, so I don't need anything special. Let's look at this baby. Um, okay, I guess we just open it. Like so. Pull it out. Like so. Here it is. Same thing here that this computer. Will lay flat. Uh, they do have a nifty tr uh, number pad hidden under a trackpad. On some Asus uh, computers, they have the numbers written and you turn it on and off. On this one, you actually, when you turn on the number pad, the numbers light up uh, underneath. So really cool. Uh, I don't really need it, but it's there. So who cares? Laying flat, that's one of the criteria that I need for the computer. I like them to be flat because of how I use them. Let's... Um, the parameters for the computer are good. Uh, it is an i5 though, uh, not an i7 like my Dell. Uh, overall, this is metal body, so it's not going to start peeling. Uh, metal has its own issues, but uh, 
I don't think it's going to be my problem. Um, okay, let me get this opened up. I'll go get the tools. So the slight negative in this computer is that it uses a hex as opposed to regular Phillips to open this up. But it's no big deal. Nothing unusual. Uh, I have not turned this one on. And uh, we go straight to disassembly. I like to do that to my machines and uh, when machine requires service I will already know what's waiting for me on the inside. Um, one of the negatives on these machines is that I cannot put Windows 10 on some of them but uh, I don't think I'll be doing Windows 10 installation on this. I do believe there are screws under these feet. Let's see. The manufacturers like to hide. Yep, there it is, and then it's a regular Phillips screw that's hidden in there. Um, manufacturers hide these screws so that they know that the machine has been taken apart. If it uh, fails or something happens to it and you have to send it in, they will give you a hard time in saying, well, that machine was opened. So in effect, you are avoiding the warranty by doing what I'm doing. But I'm doing it for you. I'm not worried too much about warranty. I'm more worried about what is waiting for me on the inside. I have to know that. Okay, now we need to pry it open. Whenever it's done the first time, the computer is always fighting more. Yeah. You open it after. Okay. Hmm. There's something holding it in the middle. There may be one more here. They like to do that. Nope. Just a little lock in the middle. Okay, so to open this computer, uh, I got two screws under the feet and just around. So that's good. Humongous battery. That will give a good uh, long time of service. And uh, not much else. Uh, we do have a hard drive that can be upgraded, pulled out, or recovered. 
I do recommend if you have a computer with a solid state drive that you uh, remove the encryption on the drive unless you know how to handle the keys. The Microsoft account will store your keys. So if you're planning to use Microsoft account, not a problem. If you don't plan to use Microsoft account, definitely make sure that the key is stored. So here we have it. It's uh, Western Digital. I do believe it's uh, 256, yep, 256 gigabyte hard drive. This is uh, NVMe, um, PCIe, PCI Express. And that's good. So I like that it has the hard drive. Not all computers have hard drives. Uh, this one is not the cheap computer. It's not a cheap version. I will be upgrading the hard drive to 500. Um, there is, uh, if it depends on what will be done with a computer. Uh, I do have some software that I like to store. I do have some uh, reason for having the larger hard drive. But in reality, there's two reasons why manufacturers put 256 megabyte hard drives in. Uh, number one reason is they want to sell you their um, cloud space. Their cloud space brings them money you get used to the cloud and if you used to the cloud eventually you're going to run out of the space in the cloud and they will be uh, willing to extend you the great um, Uh, favor of offering you to pay for more storage. Okay. I am not okay with that. I do not want to be tied into the cloud. Don't get me wrong. I use cloud storage. I just don't want to be tied and having to pay for the storage that I'm forced to. So I don't like to be forced to pay for anything. And Apple is number one at giving you uh, parameters on a computer that are like a 128 gigabyte hard drive. And they say, well, the rest is stored in the cloud. And of course, we're gonna fill up your cloud with useless backups and uh, all the photos and uh, the storage, initial storage that you get for free, five gigabytes, will get filled up fairly quickly. And uh, we're gonna charge you for the rest of your life. And uh, a long time ago, my grandpa asked me, what is bigger, a million or one plus one plus one plus one? going into infinity and of course some people i said one plus one because it seemed like infinity should be bigger although i was little but uh, i would say most people kids would say a million so if you're asked what do you want? Do you want me to give you a million right now? Or do you want one plus one till the end of time? One plus one till the end of time is going to be a large number. I guess till the end of life it might not be a large number. Now I'm curious how many days in a hundred year life. So a hundred times 365, that's 365, zero, zero. It's only 300, hmm, not a big number. 
It's not even a million. So if somebody asks you if you want a million or one plus one every day till the end of the life, <laughs> million is bigger. Grab it and go. Um, got to read. Got to read the contracts. Anyway, diversing, digressing. Assets, Zen book, OLED. That's what it says. Uh, Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. That's what this computer is. Um, I'm not going to talk about parameters and uh, how good it is on working. I'm only interested in uh, whether it has the hard drive and memory. No memory, but yes, hard drive. Uh, I don't know about hinges. Um, that time will show. It is, as you can see, flimsier than my Dell. Um, Let's compare them side by side and let's also compare the weight. So, actually, it feels similar. Dell is a little more solid and a little more stiffer. Let's see what the weight is. I got this scale. All right, let's put this in book. A little over three pounds. Now let's put the bill. Four pounds. So the bill is a little heavier. Um, Positive on the Zen book is my biggest plus is that it has the USB-C port built in. It's actually two of them. Uh, it does have the HDMI. I'm not sure why they put the HDMI when you can output the video through the USB-C ports. Um, it does have a regular USB, which is a very uh, important for me also. Uh, it becomes less important, but certain things that I'm planning on doing with the computer will use the USB uh, 3, 2, whatever, the old, older style. And it's got the USB-C charging and USB ports. So I wish they didn't put the HDMI in. It's not really necessary in a new computer as USB-C will do the job perfectly. Okay, that concludes the uh, opening, teardown and disassembly of the SSM ZenBook. Um, if you have any questions, ask down below. If you like my video, Give me a like, enjoy, subscribe, and save money. Ah, uh, last thing. This one was about $600. And this one I bought it was about $1,000 at a time. So, there you go. There you go. Thanks for watching.